Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. I don't want to keep saying homemade for these problems because they're kind of easy to come up with, but anyways, I'll say it. It's homemade. This means I came up with the idea, but anyone can come up with this idea. No big deal. Anyways, so we have x plus 1 to the third power equals x squared plus 2x plus 5. And we're going to be solving for x values, obviously. Right? What else can you solve for? There's no y. And don't ask why. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to present two methods. And let's start with the first one. It's been a while since we haven't started with the second method, but hopefully we'll do, this. We'll do it one day. So if you expand x plus 1 cubed, you're going to get x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. You should know this, very important, uh, binomial theorem, Pascal's triangle, x squared plus 2x plus 5. So we have like a cubic equals a quadratic. Let's go ahead and put everything on the left and simplify. x cubed, 3x squared minus 2, minus 1, x squared, 2x squared, 3x minus 2x, x, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and that is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, what do you check if you have a polynomial equation first? Not the rational root theorem, not RRT, but you check the sum of the coefficients. What are the coefficients? The coefficients of x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant. So it's like 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 4, which is 0. Awesome. You know what this means? This means x equals 1, x equals 1 is a solution. Awesome. That's what you should check first. You should also check after this the sum of the odds and the evens. If they're equal, then x equals negative 1 works because those are kind of easy to check. Make sense? And obviously, if everything is a power of x, of course, 0 would be a solution. You have to factor in that case before checking. All right, so x equals 1 is a solution that kind of helps us simplify the process. How? We can go ahead and factor this as follows. x cubed minus x squared plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. What did I do? I broke these down so that I could get a factor of x minus 1 every time. Because the factor theorem tells us if x equals 1 is a solution, x minus 1 is a factor. Make sense? That's how the factor theorem works. And it's very powerful. So let's go ahead and factor this by grouping. We do know x minus 1 is going to come up every time. That was the goal. So we're going to see it over and over. And then when we take it out, we're going to get a quadratic, which is very easy to solve. There's a quadratic formula. There's also a cubic formula, but I don't think you want to use that because it's complicated. And quartic formula, let's not even talk about it. It doesn't even fit on the screen. It's like if you search it up on, I think, Wikipedia, there's a picture of the quartic formula. You kind of have to scroll to the right forever to be able to see the whole thing. And think about if the quintic formula even existed. It doesn't. And Abel, I think, proved that, right? The impossibility theorem. Anyways, it's a long story. But yeah, that would be super duper, in, like, impossibly complicated. Anyways, it doesn't exist, so we don't have to worry about it. So from here, we know x equals 1 is a solution, but what about the other case? Well, that's a quadratic. Let's use the quadratic formula. Now, it looks like I'm going to be able to find two numbers whose product is 4 and whose sum is 3, right? That's how you factor trinomials, but unfortunately, that doesn't exist. If the 4 and the 3 were switched, yes, you would be able to. But unfortunately for this one, you don't even have a real solution as far as I know. Let's check it out. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 9 minus 4ac. Yes, I was right. Divide by 2a. This is going to be negative uh, 7 inside the radical. So it's going to be negative 3 plus minus the square root of 7i over 2. So those are two complex non-real solutions. And x equals 1 is a real solutions. How many solutions do you expect to get? Three, because this is cubic. Make sense? So, those are the solutions, and that brings us, not to the end of this video, but to the end of the first method, because we still need to do the second method. And are we going to look at a graph? Yes, I think we will. So let's go ahead and proceed with the second method, and at the end, if I made one, I can't remember, I made so many thumbnails and PDFs, I hope I made one. Anyways, so for my second method, I'm going to pay attention to a fact that should be visible to any algebraist, like anybody who is doing algebra. And that is x squared plus 2x plus 5 
can be written as x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 4 because it is x plus 1 squared plus 4. Awesome. Now this allows you to use what? Substitution. Yay! Substitution wins, right? It's an awesome method. So what can I do? Well, replace x plus 1 with something and you're going to end up with a simple uh, equation. I didn't want to say simple dimple. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be a good way to say it. Anyways, let's call this y and don't question y. So this is going to give us y cubed is y plus 4. Now at this point, hopefully you do get an easy solution. Oops, it's not y, y squared. I'm like, I don't think there's an integer solution for that, right? Okay, so think about some integer that would satisfy. And since my constant is 4 or negative 4, uh, by using the RRT or rational root theorem, I would go for 1, 2, or 4 as a candidate. 1 doesn't work. 2 works. Why? Because it's like y, because y equals 2. <laughs> That's why it works, because y works. So y equals 2 gives us 8 equals 2 squared plus 4, which is 8, of course, right? What is that supposed to mean? Well, that means y equals 2 is a solution, but x plus 1 equals y. So y equals x plus 1 equals 2. From here, x equals 1. And then you can just proceed with the same method. Or there's an alternative, of course. There are always alternatives, right? Hopefully. Now you can go ahead and do the following. Why don't you just factor this equation? Because this equation is easier to factor, considering the fact that y equals 2 is going to come up as a factor. So let's go ahead and do it. Put everything on the same side, and then break down the negative 4 into negative 8 plus 4. Notice that negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4, but this gives us difference of 2 cubes, right? Remember that formula? Very important. And minus difference of two squares. Allow me to just write it in the factored form. Now y minus two is a factor. Take it out. y squared plus two y plus four minus y minus two, and then y minus two, y minus two plus y squared plus y plus two equals zero. And guess what? Complex solutions and real solution. y equals two. But y is, we already knew that, come on, x equals 1 from here, right? Because what is the relationship? y is equal to x plus 1. So this is y. y is going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of b squared minus 8. Again, that's going to give us square root of 7, right? So it's going to be square root of negative 7, I mean. But looking at the solutions, I got something like negative 3 plus minus root 7i. This is like negative 1 plus minus root 7i. Why? Because this is just, what was it? x plus 1, right? So you have to subtract 1 from both sides. That's going to give you negative 3. And root 7i is going to be untouched or unchanged. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. A parabola and a cubic function intersecting at a single point that is at x equals 1 because there's only one real solution, the others are complex. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.